The extraction looter shooter genre has and still is one quite niche in the market of gaming. There are a lot of reasons for this, such as the complicated balancing with the economy and meta weapons, engaging yet difficult RPG elements, focus on realism mechanics that are often pioneered and typically plagued with bugs and exploits, and just the depth of developing such projects are usually subject to long update cycles that, for a business that relies on cash flow, are typically avoided by most gaming studios. So why make such relentlessly difficult games such as this, and what justifies the painstaking process of these types of projects? And the shallow surface answer to this question is the art of the gameplay loop. Now to scratch the surface of what this means, there are some important concepts I'll touch on here, starting with why I consider this an art form in the first place. Art, in the general sense of the word, is something created with the ingenuity of human imagination to engage a consumer with a specific emotion or interpretation of a feeling toward the art they are experiencing. And it's no secret that art and game development have always been a tightly knit package. The first person to truly realize this in a modern way is someone known as the greatest game developer in the world, Haido Kojima. For those who live under a rock, Haido was responsible for games like Death Stranding and the Metal Gear Solid series. But this video is not a deep dive into Kojima's games and how they loop, because that is not where he focuses his ingenuity when it comes to developing a deeply engaging world for players to indulge. In fact, they are mostly linear storytelling experiences with a beginning, a middle, and an end. But it is important for me to explain this interpretation on how art is integral to a great video game and why it relates so well to the gameplay loop of leveling, looting, shooting, and extracting. Now that we have set the foundations of what art is and how it relates to video games. What makes art great? And why does the art of a gameplay loop make this genre not only immersive, but replayable wipe after wipe after wipe? And what does this have to do with these types of games teaching me more about myself? I believe I have a singular answer to all these questions. Let me explain. A quote that will provide insight into this is one Haido Kojima once said, I want my games to teach a message about life by presenting situations where the answer isn't a clear yes or no. The reason this message ties into our answer so well is that it starts with my understanding of what segues art from something you experience into something impactful. The reasons for this is because great art is something that reflects reality, and the better the art is, the more closely it resembles reality in a meaningful way. Part of how this is done in a realistic looter shooter is simply that they are hard. The tasking and grinding for skills and reputation in order to have better tools available to us, in order to more easily snowball our campaigns into success, echoes any endeavor worthwhile in real life. Not only that, but much like real life, the path to success in these games is never a linear move forward. It is unrelentingly full of peaks and valleys with no clear answers or markers on how to approach the next steps, forcing yourself to rely on your intuition and judgments to make the right decisions. What adds to this point is the idea of risk versus reward. Do you bring your best resources to the table, risking them all in order to maximize your chance of accomplishing your task? Or do you reserve them relying only on your cunning and wit? To get there, sacrificing finite time only to be stuck in the same place you were yesterday. Either way, it's failure. That is a different type of lesson every time that makes you more wise and better equipped mentally toward your next goal. So how has this type of gameplay loop shown me about what I do with difficult tasks in my own life? The answer to this question has shined a light on things in a way that quite frankly, even myself was surprised of. When I got into games like Escape from Tarkov and more notably Ghost of Tabor, I noticed I was likely to procrastinate on difficult tasks that were essential for me to progress further, ultimately making me feel complacent and bored of the game. It also taught me that I can freeze up in tense situations where there's risk on the table, and that I should act more decisively when there's a call to action. These types of games have shown me how I tend to handle money, and how I go about investing into my character, and what decisions I ultimately make when I have no immediate beneficial options on what to use it for. And finally, it's taught me how I feel when I seemingly do everything right, making every appropriate move I can think of, only to fail horribly and lose progression toward my goal. Life isn't fair, and the decisions you make will only help or hinder chance factors that you may fall flat on your face. The way a simple gameplay loop of infilling and exfilling mixed with mechanics that make playing a risk emulates this list of realities in a way that I see clearly as artistic in its form. It makes me wonder why there aren't more discussions in game development about how to innovate these loops into something new. I do a deep dive on how Escape from Tarkov stumbled onto one of the most popular gameplay loops we all know and love today, the Extraction Shooter and how it will be changing in the future with its full release in this video here if you are interested. If you watch any of my discussion videos, you will notice my strong focus on how a game loops in particular. I believe this method is the single most important way for a game to induce immersion 
and provide longevity. Not the graphics, not the story, not even the updates a studio provides along the lifetime of a game. Although those things help tremendously, I believe the quality of a game comes from not how the player should play the game to beat it, but in the variety of choices they have to enjoy it. In other words, did you have an experience, or did the experience itself make an impact on you, the player?